consumers are walking into health food stores and they're looking for a safer, more natural product because they know that this country is insanely addicted to oil. We are so addicted to oil, we bathe our children in oil. In addition, one of the great challenges our generation faces is, is preventing the next oil war. You know, oil only has a bad scenario, but it gets from bad to worse. The worst case scenario is in 10 or 15 years, our children are going off to fight another war based strictly on scarcity of oil. Well, 4% of every barrel of oil is devoted to starter feedstocks like ethylene oxide. So when consumers start buying con personal care products, cosmetics, household cleaning products, gardening supplies that are free from petrochemicals, they really are making a difference. I call this Green Patriot environmentalism. This story really begins with Mystery Inc. and my own kids. My kids love the cartoon characters like Scooby-Doo. They love brats. As I was writing Safe Trip to Eden, I decided to explore what's really in these products. I started testing these products and found that virtually every kid's bubble bath and shampoo product is contaminated with 1,4-dioxane. None of the products listed 1,4-dioxane on the label. The reason why 1,4-dioxane is in there is that companies are using fairly harsh detergents as their starting materials. These ingredients are called sodium lauryl sulfate. These ingredients are so harsh that the companies have to find ways to soften them. And they do this by adding ethylene oxide to the raw material. Now we know that ethylene oxide causes human cancer. Cancer is the second leading cause of death among children aged 15 and under in the United States today. That's not because they're smoking more or eating fatty foods. It's often because of their exposure to chemical carcinogens in little amounts in many different products. So my next question was, well, where do I find safe products? So where do I go? I go to the natural products industry. Here are the best products in the world, I'm thinking. I'll go buy some products, I'll have them tested, they'll be free from this contaminant, problem over. But it wasn't so simple. One product labeled themselves as Giovanni Organics. Another product, Jason, labeled themselves as pure, natural, and organic. I ended up taking these products to the same laboratory that had tested the mainstream products, and these products were also contaminated. Some of the products from the natural products industry were actually more contaminated than the products I was buying in drugstores and supermarkets. Consumers are being misled, and, and today when we know that there are organic standards, companies that use words like organic on their label are truly being consciously deceptive in my opinion. The good news is there were many products that were free from this contaminant, and there is an easy way for consumers to find these products. So this is not just a bad news story. It's, it's really a facing of the truth, a reckoning, and at the same time, a call for responsible companies to find solutions, and they are available to companies. So there's really a lot of good news here, but we have to face some difficult truths for the natural products industry. And these truths have real implications for this country and for our future. We at the Organic Consumers Association, we went to the USDA and we said, look, you can't allow this rampant labeling fraud, you know, in natural food stores across the country. You can't let people say that their body care products and their cosmetics are organic when they're not. And the USDA basically said, uh, go away. You know, uh, go talk to the FDA is actually what they told us. And then the FDA, when you talk to them, they say, uh, oh, well, we don't test body care products. Industry is honest. The FDA says they give us the tests, and that's what we make our judgments on. So we basically uh, went to the companies as well and said, will you please stop calling your stuff organic when it's not? And they, their answer would be, well, we don't have any USDA organic standards yet for body care, so therefore we're going to keep doing it. And so uh, a few years ago, we finally had to sue the USDA, Dr. Bronner's and uh, Organic Consumers Association. We sued the USDA in federal court to stop this rampant labeling fraud in the, in the body care sector. And uh, the attorneys from the Justice Department uh, noticed that, hey, they're going to win this case. So they decided to settle with us out of court. And what the settlement was out of court so far 
was that companies that are 95 to 100% organic that move, meet the food grade standards can put this USDA organic seal on the front of their uh, products. And no one else, you'll notice none of these companies that tested positive for 1,4-dioxin have this seal. Now, there's a good reason. It's because this seal doesn't allow uh, petrochemical uh, additives and it's got to be derived from organic agricultural product. This kind of corrosive marketing nature of the cosmetics industry, when it, when it intersects with the organic movement, it, you just get this terrible result of, of the cosmetic industry just taking organic as another marketing shtick, basically just kind of using some token greenwash, organic water extracts and formulations that are otherwise the same conventional formulations as before with petrochemical compounds. And, um, and, you know, and basically this whole culture is the challenge that they need to get over and they need to embrace that the organic movement, there's integrity, there's real expectations that need to be ex respected. It's not a marketing shtick. It's not just another thing like natural or what the, what the cosmetic industry did in the, the meaning of the word natural. Organic can't go the same way. It's just, we need to hold the line and, and maintain the meaning of the word organic as something or consumers can trust to mean that their cosmetics are free of petrochemicals, are made from organic, not conventional agriculture. I'd say that's the major challenge that the industry faces.